Hey everyone, and welcome to Television from the Multiverse, the DC TV podcast from Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter, and that is Connor. Yes, it is. I didn't say my usual thing, because I've almost called you Connor like five times now, so I'm just... I played it so safe. If you, if you say something completely different, you can't accidentally mess up. Exactly, exactly. So, yes, we talk about DC TV shows, and we have Supergirl to talk about, so it's going to be a very short show this week. Uh, that'll be all we're doing, and we'll be leaving you and saying bye until next week. That is not true, we're lying. Uh, but Supergirl is the only new show we're going to be talking about this week, because it's the only new show that's still airing. <laughs> um, so that does mean that we're kind of shifting in now to the off-season content, otherwise we've got an episode of uh, Lois and Clark, an episode of Smallville, and of course we're still continuing with Young Justice, we're starting season two of that this week, so that is, uh, that is what's coming up. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, no news this week, I don't, I don't believe so, anyway. Uh, no, we're not really in the... We're a bit too late now because we've had all the renewals, and we're we're too early to get all the, the details about the next seasons. That'll probably come at Comic-Con. Comic-Con, yeah, next month. Uh, yeah. Probably get a bit better about the crossover then. Because usually they put out one of those big, uh, nice, like... They'll recreate like a cover of the event that it's based on, and they'll, they'll put yeah, one of those out. Yeah, we, we we usually get something at Comic Con. Who knows what that's going to be with Batwoman involved? I don't know. I wonder if it'll be like Batwoman takes the place of Batman in a yeah. I, in I, event. I was just thinking probably that yeah. Yeah. Or do they do some sort of like? Not that they'll do fifty two, but like that was Batwoman's first like real appearance. So do they do like a fifty two themed kind of thing for the at least for the, the poster? That would be a, a bold choice. Yes, I don't know. Just just, just some thoughts. Uh, do we get a look at Batwoman at, at Comic Con if they've, if they've cast her by then? I suppose. Yeah. Which is, all, all I'm saying is, if they do even a hint of a fifty-two thing, mm-hmm. I'm waiting for Booster Gold. Which would, would surprise me if they introduced someone Legends, if that's how they want it. No, no, it's possible Legends. I can I can even see it on on Supergirl as well because we're dealing with the Legion. Yeah, yeah, Booster. booster e- either or works. Yeah, because uh, he's still on Supergirl as well. Yeah. We've replaced Lex with Lena. We've already got her. Yeah, yeah. yeah it kind of works. Yeah, and then... I mean, we have Ralph. I mean, he's not really in the same place <laughs> that he is in, in 52. Maybe maybe if things get really dark next season on Flash for Ralph, maybe we can I get mean, there. <laughs> he kind of just went through a traumatic event himself. True, true, yeah. I mean, it's not quite the same, but... But, yeah, they could, they could, they could swear it. And then we need Montoya. We need Montoya in the question. Yeah, yeah. It's the last build in the block. I mean, okay, sure. I mean, I mean, I suppose we do, we do have uh, Zari, if you, if, which does technically tie into the Black Adam side of the plot. But again, it's so different to where she is yeah, on the yeah. show. That, you, you couldn't do any sort of direct 52. No, you couldn't. You could spiritually try and kind of achieve something out of it, though. Yeah, I think if they wanted to do it, you know, if they say they're doing a 52 thing, I would assume okay, it's all these different plot threads kind of doing yeah. their own thing then come together. Yeah. Um, and the only one that's probably going to be relatively accurate is probably the Batman one, because that's fairly on its own. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, anyway. Uh, here we are. So we're going to start with Supergirl Season 3, Episode 20. It's called Dark Side of the Moon. And uh, you'll obviously full spoilers for each episode as we talk about it. So, um... Was it, was it last week or two weeks ago I was questioning a certain aspect that shows up in this episode um what which, which aspect well yeah I, I was saying you know how we were again late in the season and mm-hmm. and and we've not seen any more of allura yet oh right okay that yes um yeah it's funny actually i kind of had you know they're looking for this rock this meteor meteor rock and i kind of had it spoiled what they were going to find because someone did like um you know those NASA posters for all the different like, moons of like Titan mm. stuff. So it was, it was a kind of, one of those posters for Argo City. Oh man, those were great posters. Yeah, so it was it was that it was just cool. It was it was a cool image, but you know it was like okay, I, I guess I know what they're finding there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, I, I had no no idea that that was in this episode. Uh, which to be fair, as soon as they get there, you, I mean, if you know if you know Supergirl and Superman history, you know comics, then you it's, okay, it's Argo City. Okay, we got yeah. a floating city. Here we go. Um, which is interesting. Uh, it does actually kind of... Actually, no, my, my explanation... I was thinking about this during the week. I was thinking about the excuse for having Supergirl's mother only be about, you know, 10 years older than her, right? Yeah. And in my head, it was okay, because I was like, well, that's just the age she was when she left Krypton, and so the holograms and stuff would never have aged. But we already had our twin aunt in season one, who was still the same age, so I guess that's 
baloney. Unless she was in stasis in the Phantom Zone, like Supergirl yeah, was. Yeah, she was in the Phantom Zone, yeah. right? So. Aye. So, what's the reason for Allura for now? Um, space magic. Does the rock that's keeping the, the the city sustained also keep them all the same age? I, I think just the space radiation does wonders for the skin. Is that is that? Okay. I, I'll tell you what. We'll go with Krypton rules. They live for a couple hundred years. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Joe, that was the funny thing about this episode is we were getting scenes in like a Kryptonian city in this episode, and they were all like standing around debating, and I'm like. This is weird. Krypton just ended like a couple, a week ago, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, uh, it, it already they're like, we can fill that hole. Yeah, it's like, oh, this is like a weird brighter version of Krypton. It's but it's interesting. Um, but at the same time, it feels so similar because they've got all the the logos in their chests, and they're all you know they're all in the shape with the, the symbols inside it. It's like okay, all right. Um, and it's been two hundred years, so I buy that you know the styles changed a bit if you want to tie it into the continuity. <laughs> Yeah, sure, why not? If you wanted to mash them together and say, nah, Krypton isn't the past of Supergirl, just somehow. Whatever. Yeah, let's not question it. Let's not question it. Anyway, so so they go, they go to Argo City, and it's funny because Supergirl doesn't even recognise it at first. And I was thinking, okay, I wonder if Argo City kind of separated before the destruction of Krypton. Maybe like she'd never been to Argo City before. Uh, it turns out she just didn't really remember it. <laughs> she was pretty young. Yeah, she's pretty young. Um, but people are recognizing a symbol, though, and I was like, "Oh, people know, people know what that means." This is, these are they're recognizing See, the House of L. <laughs> at first, not knowing it was Argo, I was just like, they were just. I thought, oh, uh, you know, they're just looking because they stick out really badly in the, these outfits where you know where, yeah. where they are. Everyone's wearing these really plain clothes. Yeah, because they grab some, uh, they steal some overalls to to sort of uh, uh, cover them. Um, yeah, uh, but of course we're in Teller and Kara finds the the, the 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 symbols and she's like, "Well, this is a Kryptonian like monument. What's what's going on yeah. here?" And yeah, we we get her kind of reuniting and uh, Allura is helping. It's funny because as she was talking to her, I was like, "Okay, is this going to bring up some sort of inner conflict where she is like, I have the option now of going and living with my mother on a Kryptonian yeah. city." It never really comes up, does it? It never does. I'm actually, I'm kind of half expecting the season to end with her going to Argo and then coming back at the start of next season. Oh, with on the Flash. I wouldn't be mad at that though if, if she's, like, I want to go and spend a few months with my mother. <laughs> No, that's fair. As, as long as they don't pretend she's going permanently, if she's just like, yeah. no, I'm going to go and you know, spend a summer. And Yeah, that, that's kind of how I'm seeing it. And even if they tell me that it's more permanent than that, then that's how I'm expecting it as well. <laughs> Obviously. Because yeah. we're, we're not getting Supergirl on Argo City for season four, <laughs> like, permanently. No, I mean, we might definitely. get some scenes there. We might, you know, travel there, here or there, but... It's, you know, it's accessible now. Yes, it's accessible, yeah. Uh, Jean's ship gets there quite nicely. Uh, and Jean's ship can shapeshift as well. Because they they tricked yeah. the tractor beam, uh, which we already knew. To be fair, oh, we did know, but it, it makes yeah. sense. Just Martian technology, so it's the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why, why wouldn't? It? Exactly. So, so you know, it was it was, was kind of nice. I, I thought it was. Uh, I mean, the only downside to her actually, because you know, Allura says, "Hey, like, so what, what happened on this?" Oh, Cal L's there, and you know, he arrived first, and I was in the Phantom Zone, and uh, you know, and. The only downside to her like telling us stuff because I actually really appreciate that she sort of brings up oh yeah Fort Ross landed and that was kind of your fault oh and your sister was there and we kind of had to take her out and I like that she was bringing all that up because it was okay right so I feel like season one's events don't feel like far away things that don't matter anymore it still feels like part of the show's history you know as yeah. much as you know that wasn't the, the best villain plot ever it was but it's just nice that it's sticking to continuity its own. Yeah. yeah continuity um, but it did it instantly make me think. Wait a minute, wasn't that sister like that aunt? Maybe your twin sister, and you've you've changed the cast. <laughs> I was like, you just uh, were, were they definitely twins? Well, it's the same actress playing both, but I mean, ah, uh, fair enough. Because we still had the hologram of the real mum. You're right. It's been a while. It has been a while, but I immediately thought of that. You know what? You could have got out of this so easily if you just never shown us our mother in season one and just said they were sisters, and it'd be like fine. Even if you had shown the mother, just cast someone else and said mm. they're sis- not twin sisters, just sisters. Uh, yeah, and besides, we had the Black Mercy episode anyway, so we, we saw her. Yeah, that's true. From, from that, so um, but hey, so but no, I like that she brought that stuff up. Um, and it became and it became not like a fighty punchy thing for Supergirl. This was this going convince the council to give a part of the rock because the the rock they want is actually what's fueling the city and protecting it's them keeping from up the shields and you know giving them air essentially and she just wants a little slither which you know seems seem fairly reasonable to me but they have to go and convince the council 
and I liked that it was about convincing them the Earth was worth saving, and I liked that even though Supergirl's presented with, oh, I, like, this is a version of home that I can be belong, I mean, even before she meets her mother, she's talking about how, oh, it's nice that I'm not actually having to hide out here, like, you know, no, no secret identity, I, I guess the effects of last episode's conversations are kind of lingering in that sense. Yeah. But she, you know, she has to make the speech, and she still fights for Earth. She still, no, Earth is worth saving. And, you know, it cuts to Alex doing some action stuff as as she's narrating, um, monologuing. Some, some questionably intense action stuff, I have to say. I love it. She she's went full nineties action hero, where you know physics don't quite apply to but, her. <laughs> you know, she jumps the building. Uh-huh. I'm like, all right, fine. It's a big and gap. It's a big gap. It's a big gap, but, but yeah. I, uh, I buy it. I buy it. Uh, and then she's hanging on. And then she just kind of f- flips herself up. But what what the hell happened there? Do you know what? I'm going to forgive it because it was kind of badass, even if it's stupid as shit. <laughs> yeah. It was like she did like a. It was almost like from a hanging position. She did like a parkour wall run from hanging, and yeah, then flipped she up. She did like a flipped backwards into the guy. I'm like, what? Wait, what? How did she do that? <laughs> she's she's a normal person. Alex Danvers on ain't normal. <laughs> She's relatively, above average. <laughs> relatively speaking, in the context, she of is thoroughly team. above average. You take that back. <laughs> um, it was kind of, I, I, you know what? A lot. I mean, that that jump as well. I thought was a bit much for a regular human. But you know what? I'll do this for whatever. Like, Let, let's say I was willing to forgive the jump yeah. because I'm like, all right, dramatic effect. This was just defying physics. She, I, I don't understand how she was swinging herself in that direction. Gay power? <laughs> uh, sure, I mean, it's Pride Month, right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. She has extra power this month because it's Pride Month. Why not? It's like a super charge. reason as any. You can't argue with it. Yeah, so it's like, it's like a power goes up to 11 on Pride Month. There sure. You um, but yeah, but of course the big thing with this council though, as soon as she walks in, and I actually, I actually appreciated this little reveal, and I, I like it because... Up until now, like, you know, we've been calling her, like, the Kryptonian witch, just for lack of a better term, um, who's been talking to Rain, and we've just kind of, oh, it's just it's a hologram, like, you know, in the Fortress of Solitude, you know, it's been kind of the assumption. No reason to suspect otherwise. Exactly, so, and I wasn't even thinking about it when we were in Argo City, and then she walks in, and sure enough, this woman's standing there, turns out her name's Selena, but she's there, like, everything she's saying to Rain is a live feed, she is talking to her live from Argo City, so she's behind, she wants to take over Earth, so she's, yeah. so... Uh, I liked that. I, I, I liked it. Okay, right, okay. That was a neat because like, I never and it's because we never knew about Argo City until now. But like, there was no reason to assume. Yeah. yeah so it was a, I, it was I, a nice one to punch, I guess, in that sense. It was, uh, and I, I like that. I'm assuming the motivation that she has is, all right, clear out that planet, and we can have it for ourselves. It's you know yeah. classic Kryptonian Zod like. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, motivation. So yeah, it, it works. With a bit more of a whereas Zod is typically a very militant uh, mind. She clearly is a bit more of a, a sort of biblical takeover kind of religious ideology side yeah. of things. Yeah. But it's more about, no, no, there's an empty planet. That, oh, it's not empty, but there's a, a habitable planet. It could there. be empty. <laughs> Give me a few, uh, yeah, she a few wants months. It to be empty, I think. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, there, there's a planet there that we can just go and have for ourselves and we don't need to worry about this stupid rock saving us. Yeah, what I think is interesting, actually, about Supergirl talking to Allura is she never mentioned powers on Earth. And I wonder... I mean, she might just know that. That may be something that when they were sending her off, that, you know, jor well, had mentioned. They were just aware of, yeah. yeah. But I don't know if it's something like where Supergirl's being very smart and not telling them that if they come to Earth, they'll all be super gods because that could be dangerous. Yeah, suddenly even having even for some of the best of them. Yeah. So you know, so for suddenly having I don't know how many people are in the city, but let's, let's even say it's just a thousand, a thousand people with Kryptonian powers on Earth is kind of chaos immediately. Is yeah. Some of them is going to be tempted. Um. Hey, you know what? For two episodes in a row, Monel didn't bug me because his little story about saving the kids. I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of sweet. Yeah, he actually did something nice, and you know, it, it wasn't prompted either. Like, you know, no one went, "Hey, Mona, you've got that thing. Maybe you should go and help that kid out." Yeah. He saw the kid and went, "Oh, I can do something here." Yeah, he came back. He apologized for stealing the clothes, and then he couldn't pay for it. But I think saving our son's life was probably uh, a, a fair enough. trade. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's like, "Yeah, we need this for a week, but after a week, you know, give it to someone else who needs it, and you know, pass it along." Yeah. Does that okay? It's like, that was, that was pretty nice of him. And they, they kept it kind of believable as well, where they said that this 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 disease was cured on Krypton before they left, but they just so because they have they, left, they, they, don't have the, it, yeah. they don't have the resources to to you know do it. And so it, so given the fact that 
you know, Monel's come from the future on this text from, you know, 3000, whatever. Yeah, and Brainy it, created it. Yeah, it works. So it, it makes sense. It didn't feel cheap in that sense. No. So, no, I mean, I, I kind of enjoyed the uh, the Argo City stuff. It was more, down, you know, down downplayed. I'm, I'm kind of glad that there was no hints that Selena's the evil one for, for the characters yet. Like, that'll be a nice thing when we get to. Um, yeah. I wonder if she'll be dealt with this season or if they'll just defeat Rain and Selena will be like this villainous presence, like still in Argo City for next year. I, I'm, I'm thinking that. I feel like, you know, yeah. okay, we've introduced Argo City now with what? Th- three episodes to go? Two. Two? Yeah, just two. Just yeah. two? Right, uh, I, I can't remember which, if this one's... Sometimes this is one less, right? It's always, it's always been one less. This is 22. Oh, the other two are 23. This one's 22. Yeah, this is why I get confused. So we've got two levels. You know, there's no point in introducing this now to to wrap it up by the end of the season. That is a waste. Yeah, I mean, I think Argo City in general, sure. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shock me if they do wrap up Selena, though. Like, if, if we find out. But I feel like she's probably going to be sticking around next year. Yeah, I think so. Um, but, but we'll see. Um... But no, it was good. Uh, on Earth, we have the someone trying to assassinate Alex plot. Yeah. Um, and it, it was, I mean, it was, it was fine for some of the the ridiculous action stuff. Um, there was a couple of weird moments though. Uh, the one, the one that kind of I thought was strange was when the assassin first tries to shoot her when she's out with Ruby. I thought, man, your aim is terrible. Like, it just kind of fires and somehow doesn't hit her. Do you know what what cracked me up as well is the grenade. Is clearly this really fancy high tech grenade, but it takes so long. To... <laughs> yeah, but just the look of it, like yeah. it's you know, it's and then it's not that it takes so long. I mean, a really convenient that there's this coal shoot there to put it in, right? Mm-hmm. But but b, Alex then immediately assumes it's you know she, her prime suspect is some normal dude. That was a bit strange, although I do kind of like that they brought back the Midvale thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, but, I like that part of it. I agree it's strange she suspects him and it's this fancy, like, alien-looking... It's grenade. clearly, like, this really advanced thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that dude who just got a prison is definitely him. Yeah. Um, I like that they brought that up. And I actually do it's funny, because obviously, we, you know, the, the the worst part... I mean, Maggie, Alex's relationship was pretty good until the breakup kind of stuff kicked in, because yeah. that was when we had the kind of... The, the mother... Like, I want to be a mother drama. And... What I think I like about this episode is that I actually like, like, and I think this would have been far, this is far more interesting than that ever was, is the idea that Alex realises, wait a minute, if I do become a mother, this life that I have, I kind of have to give that up. I can't be running around jumping off buildings and th- that sort of thing. Yeah, it's it's a very, you know, typical parent role yeah. thing to do. You know, it, it, obviously it's usually not quite as extreme as Alex, but the idea that Okay, you've got to give up something of your own yeah. life to, to 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 you know the kid has to then come first. Yeah, which, which I think she's speci- she she's pretty willing to do that. But this is a case where her job specifically is like, no, wait, this my my job is dangerous. That's like, yeah. I, I would feel uncomfortable putting myself in danger all the time because it would leave her on her own. And um, and I do think it's interesting. That she's already thinking that way about Ruby when you know. So we're still hoping Sab's coming back. Like, everyone's still hoping that, but she's already kind of resigned to the fact that she might be adopted at this point. Yeah. Oh my God. There was some scenes with uh with Lena in this one where I'm like, she's killing Rain and Sam this season. That's how the season ends. Do you think she's going to kill Ruby and or sorry? No, no. no. Right, okay. She. But just... I, I think it's Lena that does it. Okay, I can see that. Um, well, she tries to at the end of the episode. She actually does, uses yeah. the kill switch. It just doesn't work. It just you know, yeah, cause... yeah. But I think she's the one that goes through. It. Yeah. As soon as um, uh, Rain said to us like, oh no, you, you know, the only way to stop me is to kill me. But you, you, you don't have the balls to do it. Yeah, she's going to do like, it. Yeah, she's doing it. And that'll be kind of the the, the final straw. The point of no return. Yeah. I think the point of no return is the is what I'd call it. Too. Not just in terms of her relationship with Supergirl, but just in terms of her. Okay, now she's over a line she's not going to come back from. At least yeah. not until we've had a nice Which long it's, season it's of her being evil. Because at that point, it still doesn't necessarily make her villainous. Because even though she is killing someone, there's an argument where you can kind of track it, right? You can go, yeah, okay, there's there's a purpose. Oh, it's you. justifiable, but I, you can totally see how they're going to use that as the start of her, her spiral, oh, essentially. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I could see them like having her be the villain for a season, and then we have a big emotional scene in the season four finale where Supergirl talks her down and breaks through to her. And then, like season five, she's actually kind of in like a redemption kind of phase. So, so I think be one of the really most interesting things for me is don't have her be a proper villain, villain. So yeah, mm. have her be doing her own thing. Supergirl doesn't like it. Supergirl sees her as an enemy, but she's not actually being you know Lex levels of villainous. Okay, yeah. I think that might be a bit more interesting. 
Yeah, at least for a while. I feel like there's there's got to be a point for the season to work where she objectively crosses a line somewhere, even if it's justifiable, and you can sort of track yeah. the logic to it. Like maybe yeah. for like a good like half of the season, it, it, it everything's kind of like okay, Supergirl doesn't like it, but we kind of we can't necessarily hate her for what she's doing. It, it, it still kind of makes sense. I, I don't know if that is necessarily you know necessary because I think having it be a bit you know, morally grayer, perhaps you know like you know, you know not being able to definitively say no, she's the bad guy, let's stop her. I think it might be an interesting thing for one season. If she's the main villain, though, in terms of the the plot structure, right? If she's the mm. the main antagonist. How does it end then? If it's that great, if there's no reason to, oh, maybe she isn't the main villain. Maybe you know, like I say, we still have Selena around. Yeah, because I, I like the idea of it ending with her being broke. You know, like Supergirl breaking through to her rather than a punchy punch, right? Yeah. And I don't know if that works if she's not crossed the line where she has to be broken through too. If that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, depends what the line is, doesn't it? Like, I mean. Mm. Because to, to Supergirl, if, you know, let's say she kills Rain and Sam by extension at the end of this season, to Supergirl, that's probably the line already. Oh, sure, yeah. So, I mean, I, I can see it playing. And depending on what the context is, context is for her doing it, it may be a line to us as the audience. It, just, it might, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Like, if it's literally no choice and it's the only way to save the world, it's like, well, no, it's kind of justifiable. We can kind of give her a pass on it. But if it's like, no, there was maybe another way, but she didn't want to risk it. Like she, she didn't believe in hope. She, she gave up the the belief that they could solve it another way and just did it because it was a safe option. Then it's like, okay, now you're you're playing into more the Luther sensibilities at that point. Yeah, but not entirely, which is what's interesting. Yeah. It's still like you know, even if there is like, oh, there's a chance at another way. It's a bit wishy washy, right? Yeah. I can still buy the decision to like, no, no let's just just solve the problem. But see what we're gonna do with her. I like that it's not entirely clear. I mean, I'm sure that she's going to be an antagonist next year. I'm pretty sure of that, but. Yeah. It, and the funny thing is, is I won't even be disappointed if they just go full with her with her, because that'll still be fun. It will. It will. <laughs> because, because, I mean, it'll be it'll be more kind of it'll be less impressive, I guess, in terms of like a new idea, but it'll be fun. It'll be like it will. But I think they've got a lot of work to do to justify to me why she goes full Luther. You know, when mm. when she spent her entire time on the show being, no, I'm not my brother. I'm not my mother. Supergirl fails to save Jimmy, and Jimmy dies. I'm okay with that. <laughs> he's only had one scene in this episode. I mean, he had good stuff last week. It was just, you know. He did, but. I mean, on the whole, he's not had a lot to do for a while. That, that, that's probably like his highlight of the season last week, right? Oh, it is. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. Um, I'll tell you what I like. Do you know how last week we had the Ruby uh, Moran stuff, right? Mm. I like that that naturally progressed, because obviously we found out that Ruby's worried that she might become like her mother. Like, she's got the same thing inside of her. I actually love the natural progression to that becoming a conversation with Wynn and him bringing up his father. That's actually a yeah. neat way to tie that into like the history of the show already. No, it is. It is definitely. Um, I like the conversation. I also, I also like the first scene with them where he's basically like, "Go away." Yeah, I'm, I, busy. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Wynn. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I hate kids too, Wynn. Tough kid. Yeah, get rid of her. Uh, but when he came up to talk to her and he's like, "Oh, you know, I actually know what you're going through, kinda." <laughs> that yeah. tried to kill me, and he, he, yeah. he felt pretty bad. Yeah, I was worried that I was going to become evil like him. I was like. You're not evil. No, I'm a bit of a jerk, but <laughs> not, not evil. Yeah. Um, now build me a minigun. So, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, that, that'll that be Supergirl I, being saved. Jean will be... Oh, by the way, I like the... No, no you're wrong. What? She's not saving Supergirl. She's not saving Jean. She's saving Alex with the minigun. That's okay, the only sure. person it makes sense for. Okay, sure. She's saving Alex with the minigun. Uh, which, by the way, I like that the whole plan to draw out the real uh, assassin... Uh, you know, they didn't even tell us the plan. They just showed us. Oh, here, okay. Oh, it's Jean. It's Alex, and Alex is up in the the rooftop. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously. They, they, they don't do this enough. I know, because I was like, yeah, I'd probably critique you if you didn't do this, because you know, Jean can take a bullet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty happily. So, so it makes sense. Uh, but it turns out to be an alien dude, the, the brother of someone from Fort Ross in season one. Yeah, but yeah. I'll say I remember it that well. I'll be honest. Nah, I don't necessarily recognize him, but yeah, yeah. Hey, whatever, that's fine. Um. But hey, look at that. Fort Rose kind of yeah. relevant again. Twin brother. Twin, yeah. yeah he's a twin sister. So, you there know, you oh, it's all coming together. Yeah, so it's all tying in this episode. Um, do you know what I think? I think this episode's not that flashy an episode, but I think it actually works pretty well. Like, there was very little that I, I think I'd look at and say, oh, no, fundamentally, that is broken. No, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't, yeah. but there's nothing stand out with it, though. Yeah, but there's a lot it's of solid things solid. about it. Yeah, it's, it's a very consistent episode. There's no plot thread where I go, oh, I didn't like that. Yeah. Um, so obviously, 
Selena knows that Supergirl's got a way to, you know, cancel out Rain, and she goes into her robe and she's like contacting. She's like, you know, Rain, wake up, and then Rain breaks out of the prison, and that's when Supergirl and Monel arrive, and we I, end in the classic almost punching each other cliffhanger. Yeah, so. I, I do think it was a nice touch that she was the tiebreaker, and to save her public face. Yeah, went with no. All right, let's give it because she could have justifiably said no because you know half of the rest of them had, and she was also arguing against it. Before that, pretty, you know, it would have lined yeah. up with her, her thought process. It, it would have. So it was, you know, it was, oh no, she cares about her public face here on yeah. Argo City. Yeah. Plus, it also puts Supergirl into this false sense of, like, okay, she thinks she can trust her now. She's there's like a, a, a yeah. bond there now. Um, so, no, it was, it was interesting. So, uh, the Supergirl, uh, pretty, pretty solid episode as we set up the last couple, um, mm. get, get ready for the big stuff. So. Um, I guess we will move on then. We'll move on to Lois and Clark, the uh, New Adventures of Superman. Uh, this is Season 1, Episode 9. This is where we left off last time we did one of these. It's called The Man of Steel Bars. And this episode, and given that we are both miserable because of the heat right now, we can relate to the, the, the pain I'm, of this episode. I'm like, okay, I want to go and get a fan right now, please. Yes. Because I'm dying. So the plot of this is that it's winter. But somehow Metropolis has a heat wave, and of course you immediately go, it's Lex. Somehow it's Lex. I don't know how it's Lex, it's but somehow Lex. it's Lex. It's, it's always Lex on these shows. Yeah, so somehow he has developed a way by leaking radiation from his new power plant to make the city, <laughs> like, okay, I get that it's make it underneath the city warmer, because that's where all the, the radiation is, but, like, how, how he's making just everything up top because it's sunny it's not like it's not like it's like snowing but it's warm or it's like raining and miserable looking but it's warm it looks like summer <laughs> it does it does it's like he's got climate control somehow. and he's got a very precise dial to, yeah to, yes, to he's, he can knock it up a couple of degrees up or down how, how, he, how he feels yeah. but um well yeah. i think questionable science is something that this show always has and we should probably not go into it too hard that's just felt especially silly given you know, yeah, yeah, even no, by the show true. standards, but hey ho! So that's the thing that's happening, and but he's timing it. He's he's putting the temperature up whenever Superman uses his powers, so that everyone thinks that Superman is to blame. Metropolis has got a heat wave because Superman uses the powers, and it's to do with solar radiation. So he he's attracting the sunlight or some again nonsense. Um, <laughs> so we get a Superman who's told not to use his powers. He, then he can't avoid saving someone. He does so right outside of the courtroom <laughs> as soon as he walks out. He literally gets about 10 seconds from, and, from saying, yep, yeah, no more powers. And the judge is like a fan. Like, he has it in the palm of his hand. The judge is like, oh, I'm a big fan of Superman. This is, this is, you know, just don't use the powers for a little bit and we'll deduce what's going on. But we're, 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 we're cushy. We're cushy, Superman. Yeah. And then immediately breaks the law. He's like, well, the law's the law, Superman. Off you go to prison. It's, it's like, well, what do you want me to do? <laughs> And then he's given to the Daily Planet. They have to. They're his guardians for a while yeah. uh, to make sure he doesn't use his powers. Do you know one of the things I like most about this mm -hmm. is that Clark questions whether or not it's true. Yeah, like uh, he he because and the funny thing is, is I love that his parents like, hey, you were in Smallville for years using your powers and there was never anything. And he justifies it. He tries to like again. It's, it's kind of going back to this season of Legion with the, the patterns and like you know filling things in so it makes sense. But he's like, well, yeah, but that was like everyday small things. Like, you know, I'd pick up a truck here, I'd plant a few things here. That you know, this is like I'm, I'm catching planes, I'm stopping trains, I'm like yeah. all these big things. Um, so but I, I like that, you know we have the the scene in the planet where Lois is coming to the defense, going, "No, no, it can't be. You know, there's, there's no way." And then Perry's like, you know, "Look, we got all this data here. It kind of lines up. Until we've got something else, we kind of have to go with it." Yeah. And obviously, you expect Clark to jump in with, with Lois and be like, "Yeah, come on, no, don't be stupid." But he's like, "You know, what? maybe we we don't know." Yeah, um, and it works, of course, because this is season one, and you know, he's been maybe around for what five months, something like that, and and the show's time. It makes sense that you know now we're at winter. This this is what they're thinking about. Like, it makes sense that this is only just happening now. Like they couldn't do this in season two. You know. It's no, like, I, I think uh, Jimmy also is the one that points this out, where he's like, you know, hmm. you know, when he when he arrived, it was summer. No one would have noticed because you know it's warm hmm. anyway. Yeah. Uh, no, that's interesting. Of course, they end up solving it because uh, Jimmy actually tracks where the locations of the the superpowers were, which takes him a few days. But it turns out that the hot spots of the city don't match those locations at all. Uh, and of course Lex is behind it all, he's trying to drive Superman away, he's creating a crisis so they'll fast track approval on his new power plant. Mm. Um, 
And then, if I have a complaint about the plot, actually, is that Superman kind of solves it. Like, when, when he shows up at the power plant at the end, when, you know, it's like Lois has found that, oh, the power plant's going to go have a meltdown. Although Lex seems to think that that was controlled leakage and that there's nothing wrong. And, like, because even after, the, like, Superman comes in and stops the plant and kind of makes it useless, Lex is like, damn, I had that control. There was nothing going to happen because I was, I was monitoring it. Which, yeah. don't get me wrong, he's up to no good. I'm not saying that Superman should have let it continue because no, it's no, shady but shit. But Lex doesn't want to destroy the city. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's not actually going to intentionally blow it up. Um, I actually, I love though. Well, I love the scene where he thinks he's won and he's like, "Oh, I, I drove Superman out of the city," and he starts singing with his with his uh, right hand man. What's his name? Uh, Nigel. That's his name. <laughs> Nigel. Uh, yeah, it's name. Nigel. Um, uh, but I, I like that scene. He's, he's so happy. And Lex being happy that he's won is, is, is a fantastic uh, uh, mood to be in. But I love even more at the end where he's like, oh, the power plant's done. Superman's back. This is awful. And then Nigel just steps in. Well, on the upside, sir, uh, we've had a 2,000% increase in our air conditioning uh, profits. <laughs> <He's> like, Silver linings. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, just, I love that. Oh, you're playing both sides, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm turning the heat. But I own the AC companies, so we're all good. Mhm. Uh, that was fine. I was some nice devious Lex scheming. Uh, that well, was also, there, you know, if if he's supplying the power to the city, all the all the houses, all the buildings that are using the the AC, the bills they're paying for the electricity to run <laughs> that are going straight to him as well, presumably for his power. He's running quite a racket at this point. He really is, isn't he? So. <laughs> Yeah, there was, there was a lot of fun stuff in this episode. I, I like the like Lois coming by when she thinks Superman's staying with Clark to make them dinner. Uh, and she's like, well, Superman's in the shower? It, the suit comes off? Did you see it? Did you look at him? It's like, no, no Lois. Uh, you know, it's privacy. Like, no, of course not. I wouldn't either. Yeah. Uh, lots of fun stuff. Uh, him wetting his hair. It was actually kind of nice to see that because it was like, he had the Clark hair that he always has and then you actually see him wet it and put it back in the scene and it becomes yeah. a Superman hair. I'm like, oh, usually it just transforms. You don't see it. Yeah, yeah, and you had um, Lois and Cat hanging off his arm in Perry's office. Cat wearing a bikini, might I add? V- various bikinis all episode. Yeah, in fact, I love the scene where Perry comes in and he's in shorts, and everyone, everyone's like whistling at him. <laughs> yeah, the cat's just walking through, and no one's even doing a second glance. That's because it's not strange for Cat. They've all no, seen I, Cat I, in a bikini. Yeah, I bet this is her all summer. Just yeah. whatever she can get away with. Where, where, whereas Perry, you know, he's a reserve man. He likes to wear his, his tie, his shirt. You know. Yeah. Uh, so seeing him in shorts and a polo shirt was a, an event for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's good stuff. But uh, I, I was really sympathising with all the heat wave stuff. I was like, oh no, yeah, it's been miserable. It's not been as bad today, admittedly, but the last few days uh, have been have been pretty oh, dire. It's been pretty, but it's pretty bad for me at the minute. I'm still. Oof, it's very. It's it's not that it's overly warm. It's just really, really humid and muggy. Mm, mm, yes, and that's yes. that's worse because it's like oh, I just want air. Yeah, fresh air. You want you want the the world yeah. to provide you with some air, and it doesn't happen. I feel like that shouldn't be too much to ask for. Yet here we are. Yeah. Um. Other scenes worth mentioning: Superman in the jail cell and the criminal teasing him. Yeah. Doesn't last very long. Superman just moves out of the way, and that's where I was critiquing some of the logic of the. I thought the people of Metropolis maybe turned on him a little bit quick for my my taste. Yeah, you had all like the protesters and stuff. Yeah. Uh, especially, and it was weird that everyone kept like. Ah, oh, Superman! You went and used your powers again, but they literally say, "Oh, you just saved a train full of like two hundred like people, three hundred and something people." Yeah. yeah, it's like, are you really mad at him for that? Like, yeah. are we? Are, like, are okay. you... you? You have to suffer another, you know, two degrees hotter. But there's three hundred people alive. <laughs> yes, those trade, right? those three hundred people should 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 be dead so that I could have the temperature go down a couple of degrees. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Feels a bit, feels a bit. Very, uh, very selfish of this. City. Selfish, yeah, on the part of the city. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so, the, the, so there was that. But I mean, um, I, I had, I had, I had fun with it. I mean, it's a pretty part. solid episode overall. Yeah, no, it's not one of my favourites by any means, but it's, it's, it's got some moments. It's got some, uh, the little wise cracks. Um, it's kind of a benchmark episode, right? This is. The, the 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 standard that I expect, and then oh, you sure. get others yeah. that are a bit better. And of course, you have some that are worse, but you know this is this is the the acceptable line. Yeah, I've even got. I mean, it's not the first kiss because the kiss when they were undercover, but when Clark thinks he's leaving Metropolis because he thinks he has to give up his life, he actually kisses Lois on the lips and says, "Bye, Lois." And it's it's not necessarily played as full and romantic, but you get from his perspective, he thinks he's actually just leaving for good, so he's like, "No, oh, screw it." Yeah, I'm, might as well. I'm yeah. going for it. I'm going for it. We'll see how she reacts. Yeah. Um, but hey, and even a small touch that Perry doesn't even read the resignation letter. 
He just yeah. hands it back to him. I, never I, I was surprised Lois even gave it to him. Hmm. Well, right, yeah. Um, I, I think it works though. I, I like it for Perry's character that he's like, "No, you'll be, you'll be back." I, I'm not reading yeah. that resignation letter. Yeah, no, it's it's nice. So, and, yeah. and you know, Perry telling Superman all about Elvis. Yes, uh, and Superman looking bored out of his mind, and yeah. so much so that when Lois comes into like you know for a newspaper thing to like, "Hey, Perry, cover this for me. Look at this." He's like, "Oh, Lois, I'm in the middle of something here. I'm telling Superman about Elvis." It's like, it's fine. Do your job. Uh, he's basically saying, "Yeah, you're all like Elvis in these ways." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he had a few scrapes with the law in the later years, but for the most part, his heart was in the right place. Like yours, yeah. Superman's heart's in the right place. That's that's Superman. Nothing else. Just <laughs> heart's in the right place. Oh, I, I, I love that scene. I mean, some. I mean, Lex Luthor. Not in this show, but Lex Luthor's heart can be in the right place in some interpretations of him. In some interpretations, yes. Not this one. Yes, but the point I'm making there is that heart's in the right place is usually what you say when someone's messed up, <laughs> and. Yeah. On the surface, yeah. they're not doing too well. Superman's kind of above and beyond. Just his heart's in the right place, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he was saying yeah, specifically this episode, heart's in the right place. You, you know, you shouldn't be using your powers, but there's people to be saved. It's nice of him. Also, if someone shoots him, he can't turn off his vulnerability. Yeah. 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 Also, I thought Superman himself was a bit stupid at one point, actually, because. Uh, someone spills something in the courtroom in a later scene, and he like flies out of the way of it. I'm like, just step back, like, what? like, th- just let it hit, just let it spill on you. You've got like, a clumsy reputation. Like stopping someone from shooting someone or saving a train. That is, I get why you're doing that, but I felt like here he was using his powers because when he's Clark, he can't do this. When he was when he's Clark in front of people, he would have to either take the spill or just step away in a normal human way. But no, no, he, he floats out the way. And it's just, it's, it's, he doesn't need to. Because he can. It's yeah. unnecessary, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's not unnecessary. What? Using your heat vision to heat up that water instead of that ancient looking kettle. <laughs> oh boy. Don't envy that. <laughs> uh, I like that he never uses the, the cooker because he's sort of like, he's, he looks at the knobs like he's like, okay, so I've never used this yeah. before because I just use my heat vision, so what, what am I doing? <laughs> but, but God bless electric kettles. Uh, so that is, that, that is, uh, that is Lawson Clark. That does unfortunately take us on. I, I love how without Arrow being on, we, we one of the shows we put in the off season content was something that I also hate, just just to make me miserable all the year I, I think, round. I think the point is we've got to be consistent on the show. You know, uh-huh. some good stuff, some okay stuff. One thing we hate. So when Smallville's done in like twenty years' time, we'll uh, add in Gotham. Is what you're saying? That'll be the, the replacement well, for we'll, it. We'll see what the other options are. <laughs> there'll there'll be other shit there'll before be, then. There'll be others by then. Um. But yeah, so Smallville season one episode eight. It's called Jitters, uh, which actually I'll laugh at that a little bit because that's the name of the coffee shop in uh, in Flash. Uh, and I, I think there's one, and I think there's been one in uh, Star City as well at some point. But it's a franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. Um, in fact, I think I joked because it was the same set. It was the same cheap. set. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it was, was identical. It was, a, it was, yeah, it was a thing. Um, that was a whole critique one episode. So Tony Todd's in this episode actually. Tony Todd's the uh, the kind of the villain. So well, he's, he's not an outright villain per se. He's kind of a more of a a mixed sort of grey area kind of character. He's got he's got he's kind of a tragic person. Um, okay, I think the first thing we have to talk about this. This is the first time we've done Smallville since some news happened about a month or so ago. Yeah, and we should we should mention it. We should address it because, and the reason why I think we should address it is because the last time we did one of these. We had been cracking jokes about this, given what we knew about it at the time. Because at the time, all we knew is that Alison Mack was in a sex cult. And that was just kind of funny, because it was, oh, she's kind of kinky, whatever. No big deal, right? Just kind of funny. This is not, it's not the sort of thing you hear about someone. Since then, though, however, we have got news of what actually happened in that. It wasn't just a, like a sex cult. It wasn't just like a sex club. It was like full-on sex trafficking. And Alison Mack was like the the second in command and was also branding her initials into the genitalia of sex slaves. It's not funny anymore. It's like outright heinous. She's a piece of shit. So no more jokes about that, yes. basically is what I'm saying. Um, I mean I, I guess we should cover ourselves by saying allegedly. I mean yeah sure. For sure. now. I mean I, I know she's been arrested but she, she hasn't been tried yet. So I mean, ju- just until it's alleged. That, that feels just like a 
I don't know. Just, just to cover cover ourselves in case anything comes back. I, I, I ain't being the, the the blame of this. She 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 has been arrested on those charges. Um, it's looking pretty lately though that everything it, is true. It is. It is. I'm not disputing that. I mean, seeing photos of the initials on pe- people's bodies is pretty good evidence. It is. It is. I I agree. Anyway, um, so the one thing that came up in this episode though that made me think of it at one point is at one point she says to, I think it's Clark um, and they're talk, I think they're talking about Tony Todd's character and she says something along the lines of oh you can never know what sort of deep dark secrets someone's got Clark or something like that and I'm like oh god yeah no it, it, it was it was um, it was after Clark says oh no he used to work on the farm mm. and, you know, and you know all this stuff and she goes oh just because you work with someone you know, all, all day doesn't mean you actually know them yeah I was uh and I like, cringed. Oh. I went, oh, God, that line coming from her. I'm like, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, eek, eek. Uh, but, yeah, so luckily she's not a big part of this episode. We can mostly ignore her. Uh, I mean, her dad's a bigger part of the episode, actually, because the school's on a field trip. They they're, they're, went to the, the, the processing plant, the Lex Corp, or the it. Luther Corp, I should say, in this show, processing plant. Um, so, you know, and he's, our dad works there. He's the one he's giving a, it to her. He's manager. He cracks some good jokes, though. I'll give him that. Proper dad jokes. Proper dad jokes. Um, and everybody else is enjoying it. Uh, Chloe's just uh, being embarrassed, uh, being all selfish. But anyway, so Martha and Jonathan have went to Metropolis. It's an anniversary, so they're going for a, a romantic weekend. And Clark wants a small get-together just so he can ask Lana to come. That, that's that's the whole reason. Yeah, yeah right. um, Cut to the, the house is full of teenagers, most of whom he doesn't even recognise. Uh, is the gag and Lana shows up and even she's like I don't even know half these people this is weird um, I love that when, when the dude's gonna puke Clark super speeds across to get like a, a bowl for him to throw up in mm-hmm. he's like nah he's so drunk he's not gonna he's not gonna notice yeah yeah uh, yeah the the Clark Lana thing is just like I mean there's not too much of it this episode thankfully it's not really it's a not, focus it's not really that bad here um, but you know is that, is that was like oh so you come solo tonight and I'm like just say, it. just ask where Whitney is. Like, just no, but to, to be fair, she kind of calls him on that shit immediately. She's like, "Oh, you mean where's Whitney?" Well, yeah, but that's kind of my thing. Is that the whole thing is awkward? Like, I just didn't like any part of it. No, I I appreciate <laughs> that she she calls him on it though, rather uh... than rather than going with his bullshit. For me, that's just like another step of the the awkward drama that I don't want. Is the oh the... no, it's not good, but at least yeah. it, you know it, it tracks rather than her pretending to go along with it. Yeah, and then she's fighting with Whitney, but that seems to just get put by the side though, because when they find Tony Todd shaking, he's he's he's, he's got like like super Parkinson's basically, and he's he's making everything shake. It's and a really aggressive effect that they use. It is because uh, he accidentally kills like his his coworker from uh, Luther Corp. He, he he shakes him to death. He shakes him to death. Um, I mean, <laughs> anyway, so. You have you have that, and he he comes to Clark. Clark takes him to the hospital. Parents show up. They're not happy about the house, even though Clark super speeds around cleaning it up. Yeah, I mean, who cares? It's all clean. Yeah. Well, I think they're upset that they phoned their own house and got six different people <laughs> in one night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> None of whom even help. knew who Clark was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably I, didn't help. I, I think that's why they're upset. Uh, was this the first episode outside of the first one? Was it we've had John Glover, or did we have him in one since the pilot? Uh, I'm not sure actually. I may, I may had one. May I had one where he came by to. No, because I feel like because he, he sent like a, like a lawyer or someone to like check on Lex. It wasn't him. Yeah, maybe maybe he's had like one scene with Lex. Yeah, I just when he showed, I was like, oh, John Glover. Is this the first time I've had him? I said, no, he was in the pilot for sure. But um, yeah. I, I was I trying to remember since then. I'm not gonna lie, he speaks a lot of sense here when he shows up. So he shows up at the plant, you know, mm. you know the, 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 all the kids have been taken hostage. Yeah, because Tony Todd's t- taking them hostage. Yeah. He's yeah. demanding that he wants uh, someone from Luther Corp to, to show yeah, him to level three, the, the secret hidden part of the building that made him sick. Yeah. And, you know, so he shows up and, and the, 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 the Kents are like, right, what are you going to do? How are you going to get the kids out? And he goes, I'm going to let SWAT do their job. Wait for him to make a mistake and they can move in. And and they're, and they're like, oh, but our kids are in there. And I'm like, yeah. What do you want him to do? I mean, SWAT do their job. That's kind know, of the in, point uh, of this. Up until now, yeah, no, he he sounds fine. It's more it's more as it goes on. 
other things start to like seep oh, through. Sure, later on, but that, when, immediately when he shows up, they're jumping on him, going, you, you, "This is your fault. You've got to do this." I'm like, and he's, I, I think, I, a personally rational response to say, "I, know, I, th- no, I, I think all the characters in this scene play out exactly how they should. The parents are a lot, are terrified, so they're they're making demands, even though they're not necessarily logical. I, I, I buy that they shouldn't be making sound logical. Fair enough. I think they're a little bit accusationary because it's Lionel Luther. Yeah, but to I mean to be fair, I mean they're not wrong. To be yeah, jo- Jonathan's got a history with Lionel. We know this, he does. <laughs> so he does. you know, again, it, it plays to the characters. I don't want to defend the show too much, but the, the, all the characters in this scene track for me, including Lex. Everyone's opinion on the matter fair works enough. out for me. But then Lex wants to play the hero, and he goes in to talk to him. Um, Lionel wants not no part of it, uh, and. Clark can't actually go near him, because at one point Whitney's like, hey Clark, we can take him together, right? Uh, but we've seen that because whatever they were using on these crops to make them grow faster involved kryptonite, so now Clark reacts to him as if he's kryptonite. So we get the... so and I'm still counting this as the kryptonite every episode. I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's it's a little more actually inbaked into the plot on this one. The it's, green veins this, in this his hand forgivable. are popping out, so it counts. No, no, that's fair, but it's it's forgivable in this episode, you know, compared to some of the others where well, it's no, just, oh, here's thing. a rock. The problem, the problem is not that it's not justifiable in every episode it's in. The problem is it doesn't matter how justifiable it is, whereas every freaking episode, I don't care how justifiable it is in this one. No, no, I, I'm with you in general. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, in context, if you look at all the episodes and you go, all right, okay, I'll allow it in five of them, this would be one I'd allow it in because it's like you, you kind of need it for the plot to work. Okay, okay. So, so yeah. So Clark goes and finds this place because he wants to help him, even though Tony Todd's putting everyone in danger. He still wants to help him. And, uh, we get this kind of standoff in a walkway because they finally get to level three, and it's all empty now, uh, which Lionel uses later to the press. He's like, "Oh, I think you're referring to an empty storage, uh, you know, room yeah, in our basement." Still not any bl- on any blueprints, though, is it? No, no, very suspicious. Um, and of course, I like the legs kind of like. F- in front of the press is, yeah, so that's why we're going to fund these medical bills, and you know, Lionel's just like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's like, because we're a family business, aren't we, Dad? <laughs> uh, I, I, I do love when, when Legs asks Lionel line, line that, he's like, hey, you, you told me there wasn't a, a, a three, he's like, no, I said there were, it wasn't any level three on the plans. Plausible deniability. <laughs> just outright says that to Which him. is actually wrong. If you go back, I remember the dialogue from the scene he said that. He didn't say that. It, the scene where he asked him, he says, I, I told him there was no level three, uh, is that right, Dad? He says, of course it is. Yeah, fair enough. So th- he, he's actually bullshit, and the, the actual dialogue from the scene didn't say it that way. Uh, I mean, he, he is a, a serial bullshit, so... Mm, mm. So, you know, that's the thing. I mean, it ends with, uh, you know, Lionel's hugging Lex, but it's, it's for the camera, it's very phony and cold, and Lex is looking over at Clark with his parents, and they're all loving him, and he's, like, he's just jealous. He's like, oh, I want that life. Yeah. Uh, my dad's yeah. a bastard. Uh, cut the credits. <laughs> it's a really abrupt ending compared to most episodes. Which honestly makes it the best ending of any of the episodes. I feel this is the one that... I mean... I'm hesitant to say this, but I actually think it might be the best episode of the show so far. Because the dramatic point it's making at the end actually felt like it was making a point. No, it's true. And there, there, there was no sappy epilogue scene with a with a pop with a really light pop song playing yes over it. It, it was it made its point lex looked over you can tell he's like you know envious jealous whatever whatever word you want to use how, how strong he feels at this point but it's this bittersweet yeah. thing and it just cuts it just cuts on the emotion and you feel it um it's still not a good episode of tv i don't think it's still it's not but uh, as i've said whenever i've defended parts of this show in the past lex has always been the best part of the show Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think you know that that's why this lands is because oh no we're playing with the the Lex stuff rings true all of it makes it really makes sense in in the way he feels and I like that you know it's not just a case of killing Tony Todd at the end it's no no we're going to try and get him help he's not he's not dead yeah yeah you know, and again so I like that Lex different, is, you know th- this this is an episode where you could say Lex's heart is in the right place yeah yeah like. Sure, he's got ulterior motives in some way. You know, he wants to find out the truth for himself as well. But ultimately, he's like, no, he he goes in there. He he kind of because he 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 goes in there. He's like, hey, all right, let all the kids go. I'll show you level three. Mm. And as soon as they go, he's like, where's level three then? Oh, it's in your head, you crazy bastard. <laughs> uh, I also, although I'll point out here though, 
is that after like Clark like pulls them up and the you know the the the, the railings fell down and they're in the walkway and he's pulled yeah. both of them up and it's like two people you know it's, it's you know Lex is holding two, on to Tony yeah, Todd. And Tony Todd's not a small guy. No, Tony Todd's a big dude. And yeah. he pulls both of them up. So, and this is like no, like you'd have to be like a a pretty strong guy just in terms of regular human beings to pull this off. But he does it, and it looks like he struggles because of the kryptonite. He's, he's struggling through the pain, so it looks kind of yeah. believable in that sense. But immediately, Lex is like. How did you pull us up, Clark? Like it's like he forgets everything he was thinking about. He just like goes, Clark. You know, I'm very interested. How did you pull us up? Because he still got. He's like, how did he save me in the car that day? There's something going I on here. I can't blame him though. It, you know, that happens. You're immediately back to thinking about these other thoughts you've had, right? I think a glance would have done it for me. Him, him actually stepping in. All like, how did you do that, Clark? Eyebrow up. <laughs> okay, no, I, I I agree. It overdoes it, but I think like should be thinking of it. Yeah, no. no, no. No. And, you know, Clark plays Officer Adrenaline, which again, just about plausible enough you could get away with it. Just about. Just about. <laughs> I think that's the key thing between their relationship. Uh-huh. It's just about. Oh dear. So, I mean, I guess it's the best one because some of the dramatic points do land for me. Um, barely any long. Yeah, but it's, it's still not good. I mean, the, the, the shaking effect is pretty bad. Yeah. Um... But hey, it, it doesn't focus on some of the stuff that really drags the show down usually. So I mean, I it's, guess in it's that a pretty watchable episode of TV. I guess it's a win in that sense, and John Glover's think, there. I mean, he's also a good actor, so whenever he's around, it tends to. And there's there's barely you know you know uh, we we you can often play count the pop songs. I think the only ones might be during the party scene, which you know, it's a pretty pretty excusable place to have pop songs. Mm, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I give him that one. They spent all the money in Tony Todd this episode. They couldn't afford any pop songs. <laughs> I kid, he's not an expensive actor. Yeah, he's he does a lot of low budget stuff, but still. Um, all right, okay. I guess that's I guess that's Smallville. He did it, yeah. Uh, which will take us on to season two, episode one of Young Justice. It's called Happy New Year, and there's a five year time jump. Yeah, and and the the season has a subtitle. It's called Invasion. That is true. I actually didn't know that got into this. That was a, a surprise. It just popped up on the title screen. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Um, interesting. Obviously, we have new characters. Just, just, I'm, uh, I'm really intrigued as to how you feel about this episode. K- 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 kicking around. Um, some that make sense. Some that are out of absolute nowhere. Lagoon Boy. Uh, <laughs> like, it's been busy right. five years. Yeah, I mean, like that, that is a deep cut, right? It is a deep cut. That's fair. And it's funny, because obviously they don't tell you about it until you see a couple of new members. And as soon as the Robin stepped out, I'm like, well, that's a staff. This, yeah. is, this, is, this isn't Dickie anymore, this is Tim. Yeah. Um, Beast Boy jumps out. I mean, you know, Miss Martian is there. She's got short hair. Superboy's there. Um, although Miss Martian and him broke up, seemingly. She's now, she's now with Lagoon Boy, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that'll be interesting. Drama to be uncovered. Drama to be uncovered, um, but we're still going to play with the whole missing 16 hours of the Justice League from the, the season one finale. I'm kind of mixed on the time jump itself. I like all the new characters. Obviously, Cassie shows up, Batgirl's there, um, all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, give me it. My boy, Tim. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could take a leave, Tim, but Batgirl's there. Uh, plus, you've you got uh, Bumblebee and Malcolm and yeah. uh, and whatnot. So you got an interesting cast that have kind of built in. Uh, I think the downside to this jump, though, just, and this, this might not be an issue going forward. I think it's just an issue that I'll have right now, right after the jump. Is that I feel a little bit shortchanged and like, I feel like, okay, I got so used to that team and I feel like there was more to develop with those characters. And some of them are not here. Some of them are on the Justice League. And we'll still see them occasionally, presumably. Some, but some of them we don't see in this episode. We, some of them we don't. You know, there's no Artemis. Uh, there's no, no Aqualad. No Aqualad, no, you're right. No, no Wally. Uh, no Wally, yeah. Very true. Um... But then there's some that are on the Just League, like Zatanna, and I'm like, okay, so we'll see her occasionally, but she's not going to be on the main team around as much. And I'm like, that's a shame, because I only got her, like, you know, she was like two thirds out of season one before we got her. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I think, and I wonder if part of this was fueled by, you know, like, hey, this show's to sell toys, I have a lot more characters to sell more toys, because they're all new new figures we can sell. I wonder if that's part of the, the reasoning behind the, the big roster shake-up. I'm sure partially. I, I will say, you know, you know the, the show becomes a lot wider as a, as a DC Universe show mm. this season. It becomes less just, okay, let's follow the team at all times. That's fair. That's fair. I, I think 
it's the sudden jolt of like everything. Like I almost everything's changed. I almost like the slower progression of like getting all the, all these things gradually and being excited by each new thing as they get added in. Having this big jump is like okay, right? Okay, now everything's yeah. changed. All these new characters. I, I think it's interesting though because they did that in season one. They played it really slow. We didn't even get the full team till you know six, seven episodes. Yeah. And then here it's you know they do the opposite. It's like here's the situation. We're gonna we'll fill you in as and when we get there. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure I'm sure this season will be fine once once I get accustomed to the new teams and who's around now and whatnot. But you know, I, I kind of I almost wish there was a season in between that that took me through this. No, I get that transition. Um, I think and I think it's because it's TV. I, th- I think this is the sort of thing I'd expect in a movie where I come to the sequel and time has passed, and because we want some new characters, we'll have them in. I think one of the things I like about TV is that we we progress through the time and we, yeah. we have things build at a nice natural pace. Uh, mm. it's, what, it's what I love about things like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where, no, no, you look at that show over the five years and how much it's grown and how the characters have grown and you feel like you've earned all that time. Yeah. Uh, jumping five years, it just feels like, you know... Um, but That's yeah. fair. It's one of those... It's it's, it's strange right now, but as you, as you get used to it, it's just you'll, you'll settle into the yeah. groove, right? Yeah. But I, I do think... I was like, man, season three is going to be this as well, right? There's going to be another time jump and it's going to be I like a... So, yeah. And then another completely new team shake-up. Um, <laughs> and it's like, okay, all right. Um, I just I hate losing characters. I guess is is my thing. I hate I hate, you know, it's fine when you have a big dramatic death and they have to build up to the end of the arc, but it's but when they just cut time out and then it's oh no, no character's just gone. It's a little bit annoying. I, I will say I don't think any of the characters are gone. Like no one from season one is oh, gone. Gone, gone, sure, but just in the sense that they're, they're maybe not part of the main team, but I think yeah. all of them have dramatic points and arcs over the season. Yeah, that's 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 fair. Um, but I won't be seeing as much of them. And that, that, no, that's, that's kind fair. Of, that's kind of a shame. Um, and it's, I mean, I might end up loving Lagoon Boy, but right now I'm like, really, I lost Wally for Lagoon Boy? Like, the yeah, hell? No, I get that. Um, I, I think there's, there's some small touches that are like, okay, I get Wally was around for this team at some point. Like, they, they, they must have interacted, or, you know, through the, the legacy is there because, you know, there's still the souvenir room, and, you know, the, you know the, the, the Beast Boy is excited mm. to get souvenirs. So I'm like, okay, Wally has imparted that at some point. Oh, sure, yeah. Like I say, I, I, I think I'll enjoy the season just fine. I, I, this complaint won't come back up again. It's just right now, because this is the episode that had the time jump, the Joel, I'm just kind of like, oh, wait, okay, everything's changed. Right, I, need, I, need, I need to learn to love the show again almost. It has to It has to almost win me back now. because You have, it's to, just, you have to love all these new characters. Yeah, it, it's shaking me up. Like, you know, it's, it spent a year building up uh, all the... You know, it it feels more like a spin off than it does a season two. I guess is what I'm saying. No, I can see that. Yeah, which is which is fine. But as like, I kind of worked a season two of that show as well. I think I think in some ways it feels like really true to comics. In like, yeah, okay, season one that was that was a Teen Titans book, right? And then this is this isn't a Teen Titans book anymore. This is whatever. It oh is sure, now. no, that's a, that's a fair comparison. Like it's, um, it's the same universe. All the events. It's the it's the follow up book. Even you know, I mean, to to compare it to right now in comics, we had Metal, and then we have No Justice, and then we've got a new Justice League book, and they're all separate books, but it's one big story. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I do think that's 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 kind of missing part of what I like about TV. That's fair. I th- I think that's why the, these other seasons are subtitled, right? Because this isn't necessarily Young Justice season two. This yeah. is Young Justice Invasion. Yeah, no. Um, so maybe I'll handle it better in season three because I've already went through it in this one. Uh, but yeah. It was just a sudden jolt. I was like, oh, okay. Mate. But even though I was, I was, I was excited to see certain characters like Batgirl all, jumping. All in. the stuff itself. You yeah. Have a problem with it's just the, yeah. the concept of Adam Strange. Story, yeah. You know, Ran and what's the name of the alien race that are invading Earth right now? Crawlers. Something like that. Crawler. Crawler Ari or something like that. Something like that, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. A little, little green does. Um, uh, Lobo's around. Batgirl and Cassie are kind of try to try to take on take on Lobo. Turns out there's a the the, the senator they're trying to protect. There's a little green man inside, uh, and they're trying to investigate this. But the big thing that comes out of all this, I mean, we have like the the, the C team, which is Lagoon Boy, Tim, and um, who went with them? Uh, uh, Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. Yeah. I haven't mentioned him yet. Blue Beetle's in there. Um, and they have a bit of an adventure. Crolatians. Cro- Crolatians, there you go. Um, they have a bit of an adventure, but I mean, ultimately that was just kind of, okay, here's, here's a little, so here's Lagoon Boy's thing. He's, he's got a bit of strength, got a bit of speed. He can do a sort of puffer, puffer fish-like Hulk thing uh, at times. 
and you know, so it still establishes him it establishes Tim as the new Robin and kind of like you know sets up that he's a, a protege kind of next in the line um, although it never actually says who he is like I mean I, we know it's Tim from yeah, comics but they, they, they never really named Dick last season right that is true. It's very strange. But obviously, he's Nightwing now. He's around. And he's still on the team. That was one of the little points that I thought was interesting, is that him, Miss Martian, and Superboy can join the Justice League. The spots are open for them, but they're choosing to train the team instead. Yeah, they're, they're the old guard. And he's sort of taken the, the role Batman had last season of, okay, yeah. no, the, this is the mission. This is the plan. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. Um, but the big thing, though, is that on Ran, uh, which seemingly... Um, we don't have a Thanagar, or at least not in the tradition. Because, I mean, the Hawks in this right, they aren't from Thanagar. Are they? they I they're... don't think so. They're the reincarnating Egyptian. I think I think they're kind. the Egyptian ones. Yeah. And I'm gonna go with that based off of one of the the news TV thing. You know, they're like, oh, oh who who's an alien? Are you gonna mm. tell me the Hawkman's an alien? I'm like, right, okay, guess it's the Egyptian one. Yeah, it was Cat Grant on the news actually on the yeah. as a report. Um. So that was interesting, but the, the missing time, the 16 hours that were missing, for some reason, the Justice League are outlaws. Like, they're wanted uh, on RAN. Yeah. Um, so we have Adam Strange, who kind of takes like some non-leaguers, uh, and that's uh, Superboy, Beast Boy, and um, Miss Martian to, to RAN. To, and that presumably is going to be episode two, because that's how we end. We end with them landing there. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll see maybe how that, that shakes up. Uh, yeah, a lot of this was okay. Here's the new characters. Here's the new setup. Here's kind of what the plot of the season is going to be. Yeah, you you really get the idea that the the team has grown into something else entirely. Not just with the new members, but mm. you know, we're split up into divisions. You got you know Alpha Squad, Beta Squad. You um, know, like, like Gemini you, Squad was that the third one? Gamma. Gamma, that was it. Yeah, but there there, there was a Delta Squad at one point. You know, because when they first call in, uh, you know, down in the sewers, when we're fighting Clayface. They're Delta Squad at that point. I, I'm assuming they just pick right. every t- every time. It's just like, okay because at the start of this they just kind of split up into these teams because uh, Nightwing just says okay you three are this team you three are that team. I don't think it's like set teams forever. It's just no, I agree. But I thought yeah. it was weird that we went from Delta to Gamma. I'm like why why the downgrade? Yeah, what's the uh, is it Charlie? Is that the C? No, it's not. It's not. I'm thinking of you're thinking of like the NATO for, yeah, for NATO. Yeah, I am. Alpha, what's but... what's the what's the C? In this. Oh no, these are all you know because these these are essentially the the Greek ones, right? Yeah, Alpha Beta. I, I've got a friend who works at a call center, and for for reasons they have to know all this, so they, they know the whole alphabet. Really? Yeah. The, this this one. This one, yeah. Weird. No, I can I couldn't tell you. Kappa. What, what... Oh, no, that sounds right. Alpha Beta Kappa Delta. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what E is. I've I've, I've, I've tapped out E. Epsilon. It might actually be that. I'm I'll not, take your word uh, yeah, for that, it. That's, there's something <laughs> in the back of my brain saying that. So, it's coming from somewhere. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I, I I don't know why either. Uh, Delta just sounds better than Kappa does, I guess. Yeah. And then Gamma, I guess. Gamma, so. gamma, you know, going from Delta to Gamma sounds like you're getting a demotion, doesn't it? Well, that's kind of like Goon Boy's thing. He's like, I'm, I'm on the I'm Yeah, on the but he C-squad. goes, oh, Gamma again. True, true. <laughs> Oh, that's just, that was a weird thing. Um, yeah, so I need more Batgirl. It's interesting that it's Babs. I think it's funny that we've got Babs essentially with the Titans. I mean, that, okay, Dick's still kind of with the Titans, but he's, he's the older Nightwing. She, she's more Tim's age. Yeah, which is interesting. The better the Arkham Knight thing where she's in a relationship with Tim, that'll upset me. <laughs> I don't recall it, but I don't know. It's been a while. Dick, Babs forever. I'll fight anyone who says otherwise. Yeah, I'm, I'm Dick and Starfire personally. So, I mean, that's that's fine, but like, I don't want yeah, Babs no, with it, Tim. It's I, I get it. It feels weird when Tim just kind of takes Dick's leftovers, right? Don't don't refer to Babs as no, Dick's I, I, leftovers. How I, it's dare not you? The only example. I'm talking. You know, when they 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 change his origin. You know, they change his origin. It's like, oh, you can have some leftover from Dick's origin. It's fine, <laughs> and it, you know, it makes him less his own character. <laughs> yeah. So, so that time in comics when he was from the Flying Drakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, um, that never happened, by the way, guys. I'm joking. I'm, no. I was being facetious. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, no, it was a it was a, it was a solid setup to the season. Um, my my complaints mostly are about just um, 
the jolt of the change and the choice to have the five year jump and have everything be different. Yeah, I respect that they they do it and stick to it though. Yeah, you know, there's not like a, a hint of something. It's not like oh, here's what we can get and then go back. I hmm. respect that. You know, okay, they made that choice and just went with it. Yeah. But uh, I think it's a pretty strong episode overall because you set up a lot of the mystery of okay, where is everyone? What's changed? You know, okay, what happened between Super uh, Superboy and Miss Martian? You know, like, okay, what what's gone on there? Mm. And then you get the introduction of new characters like you know, got Batgirl, you got Wonder Girl. It's like okay, this is this is cool. It's a real expansion. Yeah, yeah. Um, so setting not... up that the uh, the little dudes are afraid of Blue Beetle. Yep, yep, and he can, he can, uh, the beetle itself can understand the language and yeah. let Jaime talk, talk in the language. So that, that's some details. Uh, and I'm curious about why the characters might show up. Um, you know, there's some notable missing characters, kind of from, you know, just t- Tim's generation, say, like Bart. Is Bart going to show up this season? I yeah. don't know. Maybe he will. But, but again, you know, we got to go, all right, where's Wally? You know, what, what, what's he doing right now? Where's, where's Artemis? You know, where's Aqualad? Where's Wally? You realize what you said? Uh, uh, I do. Yeah. I, de- I, I realized, but it was a legitimate question in context, so mm-hmm. I just ignored it. Yes. Um, and for those of you who don't get the joke there, uh, Where's Waldo is sometimes referred to as Where's, Where's Wally in different parts of the world, just for, yeah. just for the context of that joke and why I thought that was funny. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that, was, that was a fun episode. So that that, is, uh, that brings us to. The, I mean, normally at the end we pick our favorite of the week, but that only counts for the new episodes. Uh, we only had one show this week, so Supergirl wins by default. Yep. I mean, it, it's nice for it that it gets to win, <laughs> guaranteed for its last episode, right? It's it's season final. It's That's guaranteed tr- a win. That is true. Um, and to be fair, like, I, I think you know. I mean, Krypton was kind of like taking its lunch a little bit for the last little while, but it, like this would have beat most episodes of Flash this season. Quite, oh, yeah, quite definitely. happily, um, and certainly all the Arrow episodes. So yeah, you know. Le- Legends probably would have beat it out most weeks. When Le- if, if, you know, most weeks, this was said probably. Yeah, most weeks. I mean, there's a couple. The Vietnam one, for example, I'd have picked this over that. Oh yeah, sure. But you know, if I'm playing the odds. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's this week's show. Obviously, it's a little bit shorter because uh, we have less shows. So you may expect that going forward to the summer, just to be a bit closer to the hour than the, the ninety minutes or so that we, we we often go when there's a lot of shows on. Uh, but that is that is us. So um, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, check out patreoncom slash TV for some bonuses if you want to support the ch- the channel and the show and what we do here. Um, obviously, comics for the multiverse is the comic book equivalent of this show, where me, Connor, and Matt talk about the week's DC comics. Uh, do check out that. Uh, there's links to Patreon, and then on Patreon itself, you can get a link to all the different uh, shows that we're doing, as well as all the audio feeds for all those shows as well. Uh, if that's more your bag. Uh, but yeah, so check all that stuff out. Like, subscribe, all the other stuff. All that helps to um, let us know what you thought of the. the of, well, you can tell us what you thought of all the episodes, but specifically Supergirl, since it's the new thing in the comments below. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching superhero TV shows, guys. And always remember that sometimes we screw things up for the better.